All right, in our last example, uh, we used the uh, coefficients of a balanced chemical equation to determine how many moles of a product, in this case water, I could make from moles of reactant, okay? And that is uh, using those coefficients um, as a conversion factor to show us the, that, or excuse me, uh, using that uh, the coefficients that uh, represent the molar rela relationship of the uh, reactants and products uh, as a conversion factor is the heart of stoichiometry. Additional things might, we might have to do when asking stoichiometric uh, calculations is determine the mass of these compounds. Because of course in the laboratory I'm not going to have anything that's going to be able to measure the moles of substance. I'm going to be able to either measure the mass or the volume of substances. So a lot of times we're also going to need to do mass to uh, mass conversions in stoichiometry. Okay, and what do I mean by that? All right, so let's just make up or pretend the uh, uh, chemical equation. Let's say I have two moles of A make three moles of B, just any generic reaction. Okay, so if this is a balanced chemical equation and it's two moles of A makes three moles of B, I might want to ask, okay, how much um, A do I need to make so much of B or any type of relationship. But if I want to go between the two moles, first I'm going to have to figure out how many uh, grams of A is equal to that many moles. And so I'm going to convert mass of A into moles of A. And then I can use this, the coefficients of my balanced chemical equation to convert to moles of B. Of course my coefficients will be my conversion factor here. My molar mass will be my conversion factor from going from grams to moles. And then if I want to, if I want to figure out how much um, uh, moles of B I'm going to, or excuse me, the amount of B I'm going to make or could make, I'm going to need to convert that to uh, grams as well. And I'll need the molar mass of this substance as well. All right, perfect example of this is um, if, uh, in the lab. If you're taking the uh, lab here on North Campus, um, in experiment five, you're going, you're starting off with uh, some amount of aluminum, and you're figuring out how much of the uh, alum, potassium alum, you're going to make. So that's potassium aluminum sulfate uh, with 12 waters of hydration. That's the uh, potassium alum product that you're making. Okay, to figure out the, you know, eventually we'll talk about this here too, the theoretical uh, yield of this product uh, from the uh, starting material. You start out with your mass of aluminum that you measure out, and then you can figure out the moles of aluminum that you have that you're reacting just using the molar mass. And then you can figure out how many moles of the product you're making by using the balanced chemical equations of the coefficients of the balanced chemical equation. And in this uh, case, in this example, it's a two to two ratio. And then once you know how many moles of the product you can, uh, you can produce, you can calculate the molar mass uh, of the product. That would be your theoretical yield. Okay. So it's a very common uh, stoichiometric calculation uh, you need to do. Starting with mass of something, uh, figuring out the mass of another product you can make. Okay, mass to mass conversions. All right, let's do one example. All right, so um, talking about glucose again. Uh, this, qu this question asks, uh, how many grams of glucose are produced during photosynthesis if a plant consumes 45.9 grams of CO2? All right. <clears throat> All right, so what are we doing? Well, it's stoichiometry, and we're going to use those coefficients to figure it out, but at the end of the day, it's still just you know dimensional analysis problem, conversion factor. And so one of the first things I want to do is write down the units that I want for my final answer. And of course, in the problem, we're asking for how many grams of glucose. And glucose is C6H12O6. So I'm going to figure out how many grams of glucose I can make. Right. I'm going to figure out how much that glucose I can make from the 45.9 grams of CO2. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out, convert grams of CO2 to grams of glucose. 
Now, uh, if I look to my chemical equation, um, I know that the relationship between CO2 and uh, glucose is represented by the coefficients, so it's a 6 to 1 ratio, but of course that's a molar ratio. 6 moles of glucose is going to make 1 mole, excuse me, 6 moles of CO2 is going to make 1 mole of glucose. Um, and so since that's a molar relationship, that's not a per gram relationship. So I just can't convert grams of CO2 into grams of glucose. Um, nope, that's not going to cut it. So essentially what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to first convert grams of CO2 into moles of CO2. And then moles of CO2 into moles of glucose. Now, of course, I can convert grams of CO2 to moles of CO2 using the molar mass, which I'll need to calculate. I can convert moles of something to moles of something else, moles of CO2 to moles of glucose, by using the balanced chemical equation, the coefficients from it. Okay? So I'm going to use the coefficients from my balanced chemical equation to do that equation, or that cal calculation. And then once I know my moles, we know how to convert to uh, grams. Um, of C6H12O6, or grams of glucose, we're just going to need to, again, calculate the uh, molar mass and use that as a conversion factor. All right. So, first things first, if I'm going to use the molar mass of CO2, I'm going to calculate it. So the molar mass of CO2 is one carbon plus two oxygens. And that's going to be 12.01 grams per mole for carbon plus 2 times 16.00 grams per mole for oxygen. And that's going to give me 44.01 grams per mole. All right. And so that's my first conversion. I'm going to say that in one mole of CO2, I've got 44.01 grams of CO2. Grams of CO2 cancel out. And um, giving me my moles. Okay. Now I can convert from moles of CO2 to moles of glucose. Again, go into the coefficients. This tells me that for every six moles of CO2, I'm going to make one mole of glucose. I'm going to put, since I want to go from moles of CO2 to moles of glucose, I'm going to convert, you put six moles of CO2 on the bottom, one mole of glucose on top. That way, of course, moles of CO2 cancel, and I'm left with moles of glucose, and so I've done my second conversion. Got one more to go. And for that, I'm going to, of course, need to calculate the molar mass of glucose. So that's going to be 6 carbons plus 12 hydrogens plus another 6 oxygens. That's uh, 6 times 12.01. Plus 12 times 1.008 moles plus 6 times 16.00 grams per mole for oxygen. And that gives me 180.16 grams per mole. All right, so for uh, using that as a conversion factor, I'm going to put one mole of glucose on the bottom at 180.16 grams on top. Moles of glucose cancel. I'm left with grams, and so I've done my final conversion factor. And so now I just need to put this into my calculator. And so I'm going to take 45.9 divided by 44.01 divided by 6 times 
and I get 31.316, and I'll probably have to cut this down to three sig figs for the 45.9. So I'm going to go with 31.3 grams of glucose. All right, so that's a uh, mass to mass conversion. Started with uh, grams of CO2, went all the way to uh, grams of glucose. Really, uh, the only new thing we're doing here is uh, this. We're using the coefficients of my balanced chemical equation to convert from one from one substance to another, in this case CO2 to glucose. Um, we already knew how to convert grams to moles and moles to gram, and so just putting them together, um, that's uh, a stoichiometric calculation involving a chemical equation.